Everybody, how are you all today? Ooh. Oh wait, it's too late for Spooky Month, isn't it? Oh well, how are you all? Welcome, welcome, one and all. Okay, uh, let me turn down my render distance before it destroys my computer. There we go. And then, do I not have... Uh, there we go. Okay. I was about to say, like, it's not loading my shaders. There we go. All right. Okay, so I was making these walls up here. I think this will be nice. Okay. Hey, uh... Whoa, uh, hey Static SFS, hey Sam, hey Wilkinner, hey Copperator, hey Toshia. Uh, hello, uh, Russian speaking person who I cannot read your name. Hey Zarsh, Minecraft more like Minecraft. Uh, sometimes it's Minecraft, yes. Enjoying the new armor trim way more than you should, yes. This reminds me a lot of when um, the banner patterns were added, and all I did would would just sit in a single player world and experiment with banners. It's so awesome looking. I'm thinking I'm gonna design a Space Falk 3 inspired uh, armor set. Uh, Dark Takanuba showed me a pretty cool looking, uh, I don't know, hypothetical design thing, and I, I might wanna put that to use. Other, other lots of interesting things like that. Um, apart from that though, We'll have to we'll have to see what other uh, what other decisions come out. I'm 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 experimenting already. My the gears in my head are already beginning to turn. I can't wait. Oh man, this is this is cool stuff. I like seeing awesome ideas like this get put into uh, action. Now, if only they would do something. I want the armor trim system to be of defensive value. You know, like certain armor trends prevent damage sources. So there's not like one universally good one. And they're like PvP strategic, you know, uh, there's there's value to each of them. That kind of thing. I just, uh, I don't want this to be a forgotten sort of, of thing, you know what I mean? Are these new people who haven't been on stream in a while? I don't know, they're just people who showed up here. And yeah, armor trims are more, a rare Mojang W. I know, right? Oh my God, Mojang has so frequently shot itself in the foot. I'd forgotten that they were sometimes capable of making moderately decent aesthetic choice designs. They they can occasionally make a really cool look for things. Now, if only they would put that toward a. a I don't know, some game mechanic that needs ironing out, you know, give the fletching table a, a use because you've literally just given its brother the smithing table a use 
when the smithing table was worthless for a long time, and then you gave it netherite, and now you're giving it armor trim. Okay, get, this is the perfect time to do the fletching table justice. Come on, guys. And for that matter, do all of PvP a very minor overhaul. You know? Something that you'd... You, maybe you wouldn't see it coming, but it would be interesting. I don't know. This is just... This feels like the perfect opportunity, and I just bet you anything, Mojang, we'll waste it. Hey, M11, how are you? Certain trims give certain statistic buffs. Netherite gives prot. Emerald gives luck. Gold is less piglin aggression. Yeah. Um, I would like to see it be less of a... I don't know. Is, is it too much to ask for uh, enchantments or a uh, an attribute enhancement? That's it. Is it too much to ask for something akin to... I don't know. Make your uh, movement a little bit faster. Like, something to encourage mixing and matching. Like, is it too late to ask for that? Hey, Void Shadow, how is everybody? I hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing all right. Oh my god, why can I not reach over there all of a sudden? There we go. Okay, I'm trying to rip up all of this cobble. I, I don't want to keep it here. Maybe I should add... Ah, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll wing it. <clears throat> As usual, I'll wing it. But yes, this trim system looks really good and really promising. I'm hoping they do more crazy, interesting things like this. Give camels maybe some sort of value, greater value. Uh, we got bamboo stuff, so that's something to look forward to. So, like, 1.20 is shaping up to be interesting. If they, they don't trip over themselves in development like they did with the Fireflies, we could really see a rare Mojang win again. And it's only been, what, three years since uh, the 1.16 update? When I, I, that's the last Mojang win that I count, officially. So like, oh damn it. It's the phantoms, the phantom menace. Owie. What the hell? Oh well, I don't know. Fletching table could upgrade ranged weapons, tired of wood level bows, yes. The ranged weapon class has needed a huge buff. And not just in how you're making your arrows. Um, arrows are cool and all, but I'd prefer there be, like you said, a bow upgrade of some kind. I'd prefer a crossbow upgrade. I would prefer tridents upgrading. Tridents that can deal 12 and 15 damage per hit. Something like that, that would be cool. That would give, you know, a PvP facelift. Something. I can't say that that would really be, you know, a fix-all. We still have a crystal respawn anchor problem. Um, maybe one day we can get rid of the respawn anchor and crystal damage source. Or at the very least, we can power creep it to where it doesn't matter. Like... I'm actually a fan of power creeping the crystal, so long as you, you've given us, the player base, enough options to play with, it could work. It just needs more thought put into it. And I don't think Mojang is giving it thought. Now that your Wi-Fi isn't crapping itself out, oh, okay, good, welcome back, welcome. I'm not updating any of your worlds past 16.5 till Mojang makes the version more stable than that. Really? Is 1.19 not stable compared to 1.16.5? I'm not actually familiar with the intimate um, stability or with that. The intimate knowledge of how stable one version is over the other and unless it's like unplayably bad like 1.13. That's the only version I've really like got any idea on.
Still feel like Mojang does in months and years what a modder would do in weeks. Oh, I know. Trend, but it's cosmetic. Yes, it is cosmetic, which is why I'm pushing for it to not just stay cosmetic. Like, hey, don't, you know, don't let this just be a one-note thing like banners. Because, like, banners... Ugh. Banners could have done so much more. Like, if you want an idea as to how a banner could be better used, look at Terraria. Terraria gives you a buff against a monster that that banner is uh, inscribed upon. So a monster, a goblin banner, gives you more damage against goblins. Things of that nature. I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. And to be fair, that's a Terraria thing. You wouldn't necessarily want to, like, straight up steal the, uh, that particular mechanic. But maybe instead, you could combine banners and, say, the water candle mechanic from Terraria, to where you can make banners with certain mob faces on them to increase the spawn rates of those mobs. So we've got a Terraria uh, spawn increaser and a Minecraft spawn increaser. The water candle for Terraria, certain banners for Minecraft. As long as the uh, biome is correct. And maybe you have to fuel it with something too. That could be really well done. That could be awesome. It's ideas like that that need to be put forward. And I just feel like Minecraft is very rule by committee at this point. And that's usually very bad. I only hope that's not the case. But who the hell knows? Oh well. Uh, trim is really cool. I'm hoping this is like a positive trend upwards. We, we see more better stuff. And again, this needs to have PvP application. Maybe even something that um, power creeps crystals to a bit, to a degree. Like, trim will mitigate more explosion damage or something like that. So that you have to actually fight your opponents. That would be an incredible upgrade. But who knows? I don't know. 1,000 average FPS in 1.16 versus 150 in 1.19. Wow. What on earth? Well, now you do also have the uh, deeper world. So I don't know that that's ever going to be doable. Huh? Maybe. I can't say. But, um, I don't know. Uh, pretty sure 1.19 is stable. It's a it's a stable version in that it runs well enough. But I think Ta wants it to run even better than it. I don't know. We'll have to see. How to tell us you have a bad PC without telling us you have a bad PC. Damn, dude. Shots fired. What's my favorite update? Um, 1.8 was one of my ba favorite updates. Um, 1.3 was a pretty good update. 1.5 brought Quartz. And it was a solid redstone update. There are a lot of really, really solid updates over the years. We've just not had one in a while since 1.16. And before 1.16, the last solid update was 1.12. So, like, we've been starving for not crappy updates. It's really, truly been a hot minute. And, like, that's concerning, you know? Because before 1.12, the last solid update before then was um, 1.11. With the, uh, the the Woodland Mansion and the uh, Totem of Undying and the Shulker Box. That was all released back-to-back. -back. And then before that, you had 1.9, which was Elytra. Um, the, over the dethroning of the Cancerous uh, pre-1.9 PvP meta. And just stuff like that. You had a lot of really good stuff. Back to back to back. 1.8 introduced Depth Strider, the Ocean Monuments. Um, uh, what else was 1.8? Oh, the Slime Block. One of the best redstone elements ever introduced. And so on and so forth. It just... 
it goes to show that Mojang can do well when they set their mind toward doing well. And then they suck when they don't. I've never seen a company have more, you know, up and down, here or there, uh, development. Okay. Alright, so now I want a wall there. Um, first of all, let me make some rockets. I'm gonna be needing those. Okay. I'll design this with some cobblestone just to sort of give it a, uh, I don't know, a skeleton of some sort. And yeah, it just, I don't want the game to languish with fools at the helm because it doesn't feel right to have a good game like this just be sort of run into the ground. Where'd I put my paper? There he is. And yeah, that's what Mojang does. They have run this game into the ground in many, many different ways. It's painful. Favorite old update is 1.12. Okay. It's a, it's a good update. It really is. I'm just sick of it. I just wish 1.12 didn't overstay its welcome. But sadly, that is the way that it is. We uh, we got a uh, an incredibly long and well, just not amazing, you know, stint of uh, updates there with 1.13 onward. Now then, okay. Um, so, oh, let me uh, let me put my visual aids back up. I had to change those a while ago. Give me a sec. Here we go. That one. And I'll do a second one. Visual aid number two. This one, and then this one. And screw it, I'm gonna put a third one. Because there were three big um, AI-generated images from that, that thread that Alftopia showed me that was really good stuff. Okay. So, um, wall design wise, I want there to be like a theme. So with, um, with this wall over here, it's divided into layers, as you can see. And each layer, you know, has its sort of theming, a different sort of pattern style per layer. And I'm thinking, instead of doing it horizontally like this in sort of a strata look, I'm probably going to have bands and then cut into it in certain ways. You'll see what I mean here in a minute. Still waiting for an update that inspires actual world exploration like unique structures all over. Some generated books and structures that tell stories giving you an insane reward for traveling. Oh my god, that would be amazing, Pepe. Oh man. Wasn't 1.18 a world? Yes, it was a solid update with the deeper world. It was such a good update that I was like, you know, I want to change everything to that. It was just disappointing for what it was because it didn't have all the deep dark stuff included. And we had to wait in f uh, until 1.19 to get that in full. But that ultimately we did at least get it. It was okay. I'm happy we did at least get all that. 1.18 was good enough, I guess. But, like, the new biomes and the new blocks were just kind of, like, decent. It was really the height change that really, like, sticks out memorably the most in my head. Because um, we didn't have, you know, all the 1.19 additions, which 
Honestly, 1.19 and 1.18 should probably have just been rolled into one update. And that would have been more than enough. Then it would have been a very memorable update. But, um, I don't know. I feel like they jumped the gun. They were like, well, we gotta release an update. We gotta release an update. We gotta do something. And in all honesty, no. 1.18 was not fully baked, so to speak. And 1.19 was not fully baked. They would have been better rolled into one. And, well, it was just fine, you know? But it wasn't a stellar killer update like 1.16 or 1.12. It was just good enough. But I want to knock it out of the park, you know? I want every update to be memorable and, like, change the way you play the game and be awesome, you know? And I just don't feel like we get that. We don't get that every update. We get that every three to four updates. So I don't know. Hey, Disney Pipla, how are you? It'd be hard to encourage world exploration now because back in the earlier version, you explored it because generation was fun and interesting. Caves span for thousands of blocks. Yeah, they kind of don't do that anymore. And that's a bit of an annoyance. Visual aid, you thought I meant glasses, Luca? Well, I mean... I see what you're getting at, but overall, yeah. Okay. Um, one final bit. Oh, is these three? Yeah, okay. I want stairs. Uh, yeah, that'll do. Okay, cool. Anyway, but to inspire exploration, you need players to not know what they're looking for. Yeah, exactly. And that's why the randomly generated, you know, books or, or something that tell a story. That's an excellent idea. Because that is something players will not know anything about. That is something you could keep reasonably secret because it's a different thing for a different... I don't want to say different age, but... It's a, it's a reason to go to different places. Like, what if villages had, you know, world gen books in them? And these world gen books are different from any other type of book. And that they just give, you know, insight into how the world works. Oh no, I screwed up. Shite. Yeah, because see, this is supposed to be the uh, turning point. Aww. Okay, well, that's easily fixed. But yes, um, I think what they should do is quietly slip in such a thing and not tell us. And then all they'd have to do is generate, like, or write up, rather, not generate, uh, write up, like, five to ten unique stories and uh, name them. Maybe even intertwine them all in some fashion. I don't know. Have the guts to commit to a story first and foremost and then just randomly generate fragments of the story spanning out over like four to five books a piece and then put those books in world gen places. And that over time, with enough exploration, you would reasonably get all the books and you'd be able to find every single piece of the story and know what's going on. And I know Minecraft is like, well, it's the player's story. It's, you know, it's your story. It's blah, 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 blah. And yeah, okay, there is an element of that. But also, you can just choose to ignore the story entirely. You don't have to find them. And... You could even make them as rare as God Apples so that you're constantly, you know, on the lookout for the next one. And then just not release all the books in one update. Release them, trickle them slowly out through the next five to six updates. And just not say a word about any of them. And just see if people figure them out slowly but surely. Hey guys, I found this book and it'll be posted on Minecraft 
subreddit. Hey guys, I found this book. It's so weird. Is this a new thing? And then people would start delving through it and not really be able to find it. You'd have to hide them very well. But if you did that, you could have a really interesting, you know, Easter egg hunt. It could be well done, I feel. That's why 116 HP April Fool's update was fun. You could explore thousands of interesting dimensions with crazy stuff. And why stop now if we're searching for just a few? Yeah, exactly. So, like, I feel as though trim is an excellent start. It's a good step in the right direction. It's just not enough in and of itself, you know? I'm really hoping we can, like, take this further. Trim really, really, really needs to be more than just the aesthetic. I'd be fine if it stays aesthetic and only that. It'll be a bit of a wasted opportunity, but I'll be fine with that so long as, you know, we get something else <clears throat> at some point that is... Like, we need something that will shake up PvP. We've had the cancerous crystal respawn anchor meta for too long now. Eight years? Yeah, going on eight years now. We've had this for such a long time. I literally, the last time I had to renew my driver's license, the crystal meta had just started. And I was like, damn, I don't have to renew my driver's license for eight years. Wow, I wonder what kind of world things will be like in eight years. And we're looking at that exact same PvP meta having still been dominant. Oh shit, I hit the wrong thing. And it's just like, I don't want this. I don't want this to stay that way forever. I want I want it to change. It needs to be different. I'm so sick of the crystal PvP meta. We've had it for far too long. Oh wait, don't I have diorite in here? Shit. I hate that. I wish you could not access or activate rockets on the side of blocks. I wish they would stop being a thing. Because it's just a waste of them. I'm so sick of accidentally wasting my rockets because you can do that. Such an awful mechanic. Like, if I want to set off a firework, I'll set it off another way. But yes, like... Oh, and then another thing. Uh, the Echo Shard needs to be a uh, material type for armor trim. That would be wonderful. And then have the Echo Shard be prismatic in some fashion, and it changes color as you change, you know, your, uh, your angles like this. If you look at it this way, it's a different color. Look at it from up here, down here, it's a different color. It changes, oh, that'd be so awesome. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I forget who said it, but, um, Somebody earlier had said that this feels like something a modder would have done in weeks. What takes them months? Yeah, yeah. Pepkep, Pepek said, uh, this feels like Mojang does this in months or years, what a modder would do in weeks. And yeah, that's, that's very much what it is. So, like, they definitely need to step up their game. What do you think of the new armor changes? Uh, now I need to actually mine diamond to upgrade. That's an excellent use for diamond. I am so happy that they gave Diamond a value. Holy shit. Even if it's just purely cosmetic, they finally gave Diamond an actual value. When you could buy Diamond armor for literal emeralds on... Emeralds on the iron. You know, haha, dollars on the penny. Or pennies on the dollar, sorry. Sorry. When you could buy full sets of Diamond armor for dirt cheap... It just, it devalued diamonds, like, instantly. And this was the case since 1.14, which has been, what, four years ago now? So diamonds have been worthless for years. And there was just, there's no value in, or reason to go diamond mining. And finally, Mojang does something to change that. Finally. And I'm so happy they did that. But at the same time, that's why I'm like, trim needs to be more than just aesthetic. It can be super aesthetic, 
but it also needs to serve function. It needs to do both. For this to truly be worth anything, it needs to do both. And that's why I'm saying this is the perfect time to dethrone the Crystal PvP meta and make explosion damage either worthless or maybe you share the pain. Ooh, that would be awesome. Yeah, we power creep crystals and respawn anchors by sharing the pain. Uh, trim that invokes a certain pattern or a certain material type might also inflict that damage to your opponent. So if you pop a, a totem, your opponent might pop a totem too. And so this turns crystals into mutually assured destruction. And with nuclear weapons in real life, the mad tactic, mutually assured destruction, tends to work. It tends to be very effective to dissuade your opponent from killing you. So that if you use an axe or a sword, or maybe even a bow, or a trident, maybe suddenly it's not so good to use crystals because your opponent might not have, you know, they may not die. You might die instead. What if, what if with trim, you have a certain layout on your armor that has like a 20 to 30% chance of if your opponent deals a death blow, that 30 to 20% chance will deal the death blow to your opponent instead. And so you might top a, pop a totem, but you have a 30 to 20 to 30% chance of your opponent popping that totem too. And let's just assume everybody will have a totem because of course they will. Like, if you're going to decide or, or change any PvP related design, it needs to be in the context of everyone has the most high-tech, decked-out stuff available. Everyone is in god armor. Everyone has god tools. Everyone has a stack of apples. Everyone has a stack of crystals. PvP needs to be designed around this. Because if not, changes made to PvP are worthless. Because the highest in, you know, whatever, isn't going to be worth anything. Because for the most part, we're just blowing each other up with crystals still. And we're still in the cancerous PvP respawn anchor meta and nothing changes. And we're just doomed, I guess. Whereas, if you incorporate trim into PvP, suddenly you've got decisions. Oh, well maybe this trim, you know, redstone trim, mitigates damage from axes, or bows, or whatever. That's a really awesome idea that could and should be put to use. It's the potential. It's the principle of the thing. Don't waste it just because it's... Well, we want it to be purely aesthetic. Why? Why does it have to be purely aesthetic? Like, there's no reason for it to not be both. And we've, we've needed sigils or some sort of magic spell beyond potions for a very long time. Oh, and enchantments. M magic that is more subtle more thoughtful, more strategic. That would be a wonderful addition to PvP and to Minecraft. It needs to happen. Because if not, we're just back to square one. And I guess that's fine, but not really. It really isn't fine. I, I would like things to change reasonably often. And us to not get complacent with, ah, yes, if I walk up to this person, they're going to surround themselves in obsidian and just blow me to kingdom come. And then what? And then we all just turtle up in our little holes and start crystalling each other. And then what are we doing? Well, the exact same shit we've been doing for nearly the last eight years. Great. Fun. What's the point? Your name is Ben Margaret. I feel like kicking dad's ass off. What? What are you talking about, Mike? Armor and TNT somehow and you explode on death. Eh, I don't know. I feel like making your opponent take the damage with certain trim uh, combinations, especially the harder to find trim combinations, would be a really smart idea. And so if you're going to blow me up, you might blow up in my place. And then suddenly crystals aren't the de facto win all in every situation crystal your opponent. 
you're thinking more long term. Then you have to go to four bastions per netherite. Uh, that's a matter of rarity. That's a matter of Mojang needs to make these things less obnoxious to get a hold of. But then again, you should always assume there are dupes that will make sure these items go from rare to absurdly common. So, like, you can't reasonably define PvP around rarity. Because inevitably there will be situations where that's not going to matter. You need to have somebody... You need to make the player think about what they're doing and why they're doing it. There needs to be strategy. And there's no strategy in PvP. There just isn't. It's all just sit in a hole, blow each other up, rinse, repeat. Whoever runs out of totems first loses. And that's it. And that's very boring. That's not the PvP I want us to keep. So I don't know. It's very kind of spotty. The sword needs a massive DPS buff. Um, if they're going to keep crystals as they are, yes. I feel like swords are only okay because the alternative is I get to kill you in two hits. One to pop your totem, the next to kill you if you don't have a script running to cycle totems out. Like, you can't quickly switch like this. You can, but not really. Like, you can kind of sort of do it, but... Eh. It needs to be more thought out than that. I, I feel like we are missing a huge element of... Of strategy. Like I said, it just... There needs to be some strategy here. And we're just... We're not getting that. Okay, um, anyway, so another, uh, another interesting design that I want to go for in this is, um, there's a sort of striation here, this up and down pattern. Um, it's in like the very middle. I don't think you guys can see my mouse cursor, but, uh, it's in the very middle here. I kind of want to do that, but juxtaposed with this horizontal striation kind of want to do something like that so something akin to this the only problem is i have to go with the grain of the uh the diagonal here and that's why i say slanted walls are the hardest ones to make most difficult walls to maintain so something like this Almost like how, um, with, uh, quartz, oh wait, no, um, with the smooth and, uh, chiseled basalt, you can sort of make, where'd I put them? Ah, here we are. Here's a few. So with this polished basalt. You can sort of make it like this, so I kind of want to make it look a little bit like this. Just just a little bit like that. And then have another set of uh, differing, sort of a different direction, all going differently. Something like this. And then obviously it will follow the diagonal of the wall, but uh, every so often you have this. And then it goes another way, and then you've got it up and down, and then it goes another way, and maybe repeat it all the way up. And then every so often, vertically, or well, no, actually, that's right. Um, it might It might turn out too much like this wall. Instead, I think entire sections up and down like this and then have these jut out in certain ways 
What's the idea? Chance spam removal license during the dupe. What now? Uh huh. I assume you're talking about another anarchy server. I feel like the problem with every part of Minecraft that is supposed to be for exploration can just be turned into an automatic farm that is, yeah. The same old, same old, same old, right. You can just make this but a million times. And to be fair, there is there is an element of strategy with that. Like, there, that is a subset of the Minecraft community, and I wouldn't want to take that away from them. Because those people want to, you know, over-engineer. That's, that's what gets them playing the game. And I can't fault them for that. But yeah, you're right. It, it does kind of be... There's no uh, long-term... Other than, like, maybe the, uh, the geodes. Although even the geodes get turned into farms. So it's very kind of spotty. I don't know. I don't think there will ever be such a thing. Sadly. Who knows, man? Who knows? Okay. Um, actually, I kind of want this out on this edge. Here. Let's see here. Uh, unfortunately, these streams are 3 a.m. So you got to go. Okay, take care, Pepec. I'm sorry it's uh, so late for you. But thanks for coming out. It was fun shooting the breeze with you. Enjoyed your ideas? Yes, I did. Technical Minecraft is interesting, but ruins the aspect of others. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a problem. You've got one aspect of Minecraft gameplay sort of crushing another gameplay aspect. And that's not an easy balance to strike. Okay, and so this will continue on up that way. And then maybe every three of these I get... a horizontal array. Every three horizontal panels, I do a vertical panel. Something like that. Need to add combat tests and more functional lore elements after all the stuff you found. Instructions can be farmed a trillion times more easily. Yes. I think stuff like obsidian are good because mining for ten years is not fun. Well, yeah, no, that's that's different. Also, obsidian needs to be an element you can add on as trim. Obsidian and echo shards would be an excellent, excellent addition. It would give you a reason to go get those damned echo shards. Because once you make your respawn compass, who cares? You know? You just got a bunch of echo shards sitting around doing nothing but collecting dust. That definitely should be put to use further. And then... You know, other things of that nature. I hate it when the items drop. I'm on top chat? No, I'm on live chat. Yeah, I'm on live chat. I'm just reading in, um, out of order, so don't worry. But I am, I am watching. Will they ever try to fix PvP? I hope they do. I hope they do. It desperately needs a, a good playing field evening. Something like, um, well, like I said, if you can power creep the Ender Crystal in such a way that it's now no longer the top dog. Because remember, any PvP addition that Mojang adds has to be juxtaposed with, well, I can just blow you to kingdom come, and that's the end of it. Like the crossbow. Like, I'm not going to sit there and shoot you with a crossbow for 20 minutes when I can get in your face and blow you up and be done with it. That's just how it is. PvP is fine. Y'all just suck. No, it's not fine, Milo. It isn't a matter of sucking. It's a matter of it's easy 
PvP is too easy. There's no strategy involved. You are huddled down in a, in a foxhole and you're trying to blow each other up with ender crystals. That's it. Or respawn anchors. There's no value in this. There's no long-term strategy. It's just whoever runs out of totems first loses. It's the same meta as from back pre 1.8, where it was who ran out of uh, armor first loses. That's not fun. There's no strategy and there's no long-term, you know, there's, there's nothing rewarding other than killing an enemy, I guess. Maybe, maybe that's the reward in and of itself, but like, that's not good enough, you know? PvP has no stakes. That's another annoyance. There's no value in killing another person. Not really. Except, I guess, to dunk on them, but who cares? Tried it with the combat test, and they made the sword actually better than the crystal, but then they gave it up on it. And yeah, exactly. They, they stopped trying. And that's just so disappointing. Ah, damn it. Water bucket fail. Oh well. You just aren't good. Milo, did you hear anything of what I just said? It isn't a matter of being good. It is a matter of it's boring and it doesn't accomplish anything. But if they do something with trim and incorporate that into PvP, it could be of value. That would be interesting. The better you are at movement, the more fights you win. Yes and no. The way that uh, explosions propagate is hard-coded. Maybe if they change the way explosions work, maybe that might do it. But like... Any PvP changes have to be weighed against, I can just kill you with an Ender Crystal. And that's not, like, that fun. It, it very much strikes me as boring. And I can't be the only one. We've had the Crystal PvP meta for almost eight years. And I'm believe me, the, the pre-1.8 meta was even worse. Just that we've never known good PvP. That's the problem. We're probably never going to have something akin to, you know, um, chivalry or, you know, sword play. We're probably never going to have that in Minecraft. I've just kind of accepted that. But that doesn't mean there can't be some measure of strategy, some measure of planning. I don't know. With Terraria, you've got different character classes. You've got weapons that are best suited for this or that outcome. And we don't have that in Minecraft. We've got exactly one best thing you can be doing and nothing else. The crossbow is worthless. The trident is worthless. Uh, the TNT cart isn't really all that good. You've got the crystal and then you've got the respawn anchor. And those may as well be the same item. And it's just like... Eh. Sound like a nerd. No, Milo is not being a nerd. He genuinely gets how to crystal PvP. That's fine. There is a definitive structure to crystal PvP. It's just not fun. It is very much a... You can out-juke your opponent, but you're not... You're still limited by your, uh, your, these fuckers, the totems of undying. And then to a lesser degree, your armor. And it's just like, uh, that needs to be changed. We need to have strategy incorporated into the system. So that there's not one best weapon, you know? You're not winning fights with an axe. You're not winning fights with a sword. You're not winning fights with a bow, unless you're just, you have a really good bow aim bot, maybe. It's just, 
there is strategy. You can run certain inventories, play differently. You have to choose between having more totems as a crutch or you can carry more items so you don't run out. Eh, maybe. But that's still one best thing. The Ender Crystal or the Respawn Anchor, as the case may be. One best thing is not... It's There's no diversity to it. It's just... Eh. More of the same. And that's boring. I would prefer there be, you know, one or two alternatives to crystals that are just as effective and just as efficient at, at killing. Give me a, uh, a more powerful bow. You know, give me the ability to snipe my opponents and that can kill them in one hit or two hits. Or that uh, the trim, since they're dead set on adding trim, uh, trim can sometimes kill your opponent in place of your own death. Your opponent will take the death instead of you. Play with a lot of crystals and hyper aggro people keep the pressure. Also, one point I do there are utter metas, beds, beds, and anchors. Um, bed is heavily dependent on nether and. I think reasonably you're only going to see a lot of en or nether and uh, overworld. I don't know about the end. Maybe you'll see end. I, I don't know. The crystal is universally good everywhere, in the right infrastructure. The respawn anchor is only like okay, outside of the nether. You can place it anywhere, and that's the only value it has. I don't know. I just, I want there to be alternatives. So that I don't have to play with crystals. I don't want to have to do that. I want to be... I want to be able to do something from the air with, a, with an elytra. I want to be able to fly past my opponent and be just as much of a threat as an opponent on ground. Um, I want to be able to have my armor matter instead of it just being sort of, a, if you don't have armor, you're dead. Different types of armor would be interesting that all play a role. It just, I'm seeing potential with this new stuff with trim and I just, I'm hoping they're not gonna blow it and do nothing with it other than, ah, it's aesthetic and that's it. So Mad Mojin gave up on the best update ever when it was bug fixes from being released? Oh, the combat update. Yeah, I know. I know. I really don't see why they gave up on that. Yeah, beds for... Uh... I don't know about the bed. Is the bed really as good? I, I, I think that it's... Uh, it's cheap. I know that. It doesn't have the cost... It doesn't have a cost associated with it that uh, all the other items do. Because it's just wood and wool. I don't know. I would love to see them add something more meaningful with this. I don't understand how people can get so interested in running at people and seeing who can click the best... Um, like I said, we're never going to get sword play. That's, that's really kind of just the long and short of it. At this point, they're just not going to implement that. So, mm -hmm. the bed is fun and it's kind of dooky since you can only use it in certain scenarios and it takes up so much inventory space. Oh yeah, that's the other annoyance, it doesn't stack. That's why I'm like, the bed doesn't sound like a good alternative to the crystal or to the respawn anchor. And if you run a, a set of crystals and respawn anchors, you can use them in every dimension to some degree. You have coverage in every dimension. So it's just kind of like, eh. All you do is PvP. Trust me, you know the meta best. Beds are somewhat overpowered, but overall movement in one, or HVH? Or you mean 1v1 is the most important thing, even the other games like CSGO. Okay. Well, then they need to give us movement. Actually, yeah, that's a perfect addition. Give Trim a movement buff. Terraria has plenty of movement additions. Jumping, double jumping, 
uh, greater enhanced speed, dodging. Give us the ability to do that with trim. And differing trim styles give you different trim or different uh, movement buffs. That would be great. That that's the way to do it then. Instead of we're talking about power and uh, raw damage, give us the ability to move in differing ways. That would be something. I feel like that's an underutilized, you know, um, idea for uh, how to build a class of fighter. And yeah, you're not wrong, Milo. Movement is extremely important. So, like... This, that's something that also needs to be addressed. Your movement in Minecraft is awful. Like, this is literally as fast as you're reasonably moving. And that's just like... Eh. It could be better. And I just don't feel like they're, they're going to make use of it. They're going to take advantage of this. This is a wonderful opportunity to add something cool like that. Like a 1% movement buff um, or certain um, certain patterns when combined together give you an even greater movement buff but these are secrets I don't know mix and match things of that nature Uh, Mr. Beta Calcul- Oh my god. Uh, notice hat cheese. Okay, what do, what do you want, Alpha? I, w I was looking away. What, well, what's going on now? PvP isn't really fun at all. It's not how to take month. Oh, okay. Whatever. Hat cheese isn't saying anything all that special. Not that, uh... Not that it's bad or anything, just that, yeah... Thank you, bro. Oh, you're welcome. Am I in the snapshot? No, I can't run the snapshot with this. Um, the snapshot will not work with an already generated world. Um, you have to include the data pack on world creation. I guess that's how they're doing all the new snapshots now. They're not, like, doing things in an update manner like that. Like, so what I could do is I can shut down this world and jump into the snapshot. And I have an experimental world set up in creative mode, but, like, I wouldn't be able to, to go and get any of the new stuff. And if I opened this world in the new snapshot, uh, the data pack isn't installed, so I doubt it will function. So I won't be able to include trim yet. But damn, that would be cool if I could. But since it's all experimental, I think they're very... They're being careful so that you can't mix and match with old worlds yet. Maybe when, like, the release candidates come out, then maybe it'll be mixable. All I'm saying is there's strategy crystal PvP that's just there's massive learning curve to it. But that's just how it's going to be in Anarchy where hacks are allowed. Maybe so. Maybe maybe that's that's just how it's going to be. But I think that... That's... that's annoying. There needs to be more to it than that. And I feel like it would be better to make it more accessible. Where a sword is a deadly weapon instead of just sort of a formality. I don't know. So what you up to, Alpha? Just need to know Jack and gain his trust for years and get animals to his end base and never fucking get me. <laughs> Damn, dude. Are you, uh, are you upset, Alpha? You sound a little, uh, salty about the, uh, llama incident. And no, I'm not giving out mod to any more people. Enough people have mod. You might have to slash enable it. No, no, no. The data pack doesn't work. Just create a world with the data pack and copy it if you want to use it. I don't think that's going to work too well. I don't know. 
It, the problem is all this shit is experimental and I don't know how to make use of it. And I'm afraid of corrupting a world in which I've had effort put into it. That would be awful. Because like the, uh, the old experimental snapshot for 1.18, I couldn't transfer over. And I didn't know how, so I had to totally remake the world and transfer chunks over. And so it was really wacky, and I was really scared that I was going to lose everything that I'd done up to that point. So, like, I'd really rather not put myself in that position again. Alpha and Jack are a married couple. Yeah, it feels like it that sometimes. I slaved get llamas, and you just let them sit there. Well, that's because 2B2T fucked them. They were not good. This Saturday, you were stuck on a traffic bus for almost six hours. One lane road, snow, a bunch of people trying to go to ski at a mountain. Jeez. A sword is an important thing in Crystal PvP. You have to carry one because the weakness arrows. If you know how to implement a sword into PvP, you win more fights. Ah. Okay, well now that I didn't know. Well. Even so, I would like for them to change things and make it more... Less, less of what has already been. Shake it up. Make it different. That's the thing. I'm tired of this meta that has existed for eight years. I don't want to go back to pre-1.8 PvP. But I feel like we can do better. I don't know. To convert a world to experimental, you have to use an MPT explorer and change the value of the world files to trick it into letting you... Uh-huh. The meta is stretched out. Yeah, it's been around too long. I feel like it has been. Yeah, there's not. It's explored. That's the thing. It is a fully labbed out meta. It doesn't feel like there's a an innovation to be found here. It's it's all kind of understood. I guess that's really my biggest gripe with it. It's all it's all been done, you know. And that's kind of boring. A meta that is solved is not as fun. Especially when it's been around for years and years. Oh, shit. So how, are li how is life for you, Alpha? What can I talk about that will uh, keep you engaged? What are you, um, what are you most excited for in the new snapshot with the uh, the trims I mean I could make this a uh, oh shit uh, designing the uh, Space Valk 3 uniform thing to be teased about it for a damn near decade and never get it well that would that would be awful yes They've been watching Jackstream for about two years and never know who I am. He, he. I mean, I know who you are enough, Hat Cheese, but like, I don't know you any deeper than that. That's really like. Ah, shit. Oh, this is stairs. No wonder I can't, can't do that. W stream idea. Want to see Space Fox 3 uniform? Really? Okay. I think Mojang will never attempt to patch it because it's a niche thing. I don't think anarchy is something they care about, especially with the direction they're taking the game. Um, I don't know. Is Crystal PvP really truly a niche thing? I feel like it's a no-brainer. You look at the damage output it can, it can deal, and it's by far and away the best thing you can be doing if you want to kill another player. Same for the respawn anchor. It's just so quick, and there's little defense against it. I don't know. Okay, well, maybe we'll do the, um, the Space Falk uniform. I don't know. Either that or a Z banner, but the Veteran banner is more meme tier. If we have uniforms, we'll always have to carry Veteran shield. Why? Why do you want us to carry shield? Like, a uniform is clothing. 
it's something you wear. You can't really wear a shield. You can hold a shield. And that's stupid because where holding a shield is worthless until they uh, implement the explosion proof. But even then, like, how many explosions are you getting yourself into? Um, I don't know. Play Terraria on stream with Poncho? Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm a worthless base mate, but you keep me around? Uh, that's because I can talk to you. I can't talk to shields. Shields aren't the same. That's an inanimate object. You can't compare yourself to an inanimate object, Alpha. Also, you auto-fish, so you're not totally worthless. Three, right there. If you want to be useful, you should start digging and terraforming. That's something you can do very thoughtlessly and almost AFK. Beta does that? Well, I mean, Beta is you. It, at heart. At heart. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I should just stop looking a gift horse in the mouth and stop worrying about you doing nothing. Two, three, there. Okay. Maybe it's a good thing that you're worthless. Maybe you should have a Zeta Matryoshka. Yeah, maybe. Zeta Matryoshka would be fun. Did I say Matryoshka? I meant Matryoshka. Hmm. Well, every three blocks certainly seems to work. Oh, wait. Uh, I might have to change the pattern. I messed up. Every three panels, not three blocks. Okay, wait, no, never mind. This actually fits. Yeah, that works. Okay, yeah, that works perfectly fine. Future client placed behind you already by default. Oh, okay. Shields block damage, yeah. I don't know that that's going to shake up enough or be of any value. We'll have to see. I'm not like, I'm not convinced that the, the shield fix or the shield change or whatever is truly that groundbreaking. It's just kind of like, okay, I guess. We'll see. Alpha computer beta calculator, Sigma laptop, holy shit. Alpha, there's a new name. Thank you, Hat Cheese. Sigma Laft Laptop. That's a wonderful addition to our little family. Thank you, Hat Cheese. Alpha, you should be kissing Hat Cheese's feet. He just gave you a glorious idea. Shield meta? Not really. I don't know. We'll have to see because nobody's on 1.19.3 yet. So. Eh. Maybe. It's iffy. No, it's all right. Please don't do that. No, I'm going to make Alpha do it. Alpha needs to. God, you hope not. What, the shield meta or kissing Alpha's feet? That was, that was a joke. Oh, I hear he does cool things. Well, he's kind of okay. You still don't have Gamma Abacus out there yet. Need to get Gamma, Gamma Abacus out there. To be, POV, 2 pt never updates and PvP stays the same on there forever. Well, then it really will become niche because eventually 2 2 t will either die or have to update. I've come to terms with the idea that if 2 2 t does not update in the next year or two, it's doomed. It'll just die off. Not that that's necessarily a bad thing. We'll have to see. Damn it. I'm terrible at this. Hey Samuel, why doesn't it update? That's a good question. We don't know. There's no way to know what's going through the heads of the house of the master. In the house of the master. Okay. 171.
in the house of the master. It's um, a dog e dog world. Oh wait, shit. Oh, I did another goof. Poopy. I just, um, I didn't have the same pattern. It's three blocks here. Two, three. I hope it matches up. If not, that's going to be such a nightmare to fix. One, two, three, block, one, two, three, block, one, two, three. Oh, I can do it from down here. One, two, three, block. Oh, God, none of them match up. Okay, um, I'll just go from this side and then try to make it work from here. Also, I appreciate you coming by stream again, Alpha. It's been a hot minute. Even though I know you don't normally like any of the stuff that I do. Yeah, I've got a lot of these pillars to uh, fix. Epsilon punch card machine. Oh my god, that's so good. I like that. Damn, Link. That is awesome. Two, three, right here. What's another good one? Um, uh, Greek letter, so theta. Uh, Greek letter... Followed by some sort of, um, oh, Theta Smartphone. That's a good one. That's, uh, that's about the same time, same thing, right? A smartphone. Theta Smartphone. Yeah, I like that. Omega Cell Phone. Eh, Omega Smart Watch. Ooh, that's pretty good, too. Have to head out because of the math test? Okay, take care, Luca. Thanks for coming out, man. Delta fax machine. Ooh. That's good. God, these are so... This is such a fun format to use for naming. I'm really good. Um, I'm really glad, rather, that Alpha came up with that idea. Alpha computer. Yeah, we started, uh, we got to start listing these. Yes, exactly. Um, what's another really good piece of technology that's like essential? Or at the very least, very commonplace. Um, uh, we've got row. So row. God, what's another really valuable piece of technology? Row smart card? Maybe uh, row... Uh, God. Row RFID tech. <laughs> no, that's dumb. Omnicron... Texas Instruments 84 plus CE. Tau Smart Toilet. <laughs> smart Toilet. I don't know. Is smart items and appliances, isn't that kind of cheating? Because that's just like regular computerization. You know, that's not really like that big of a leap in terms of technology. I feel like that's kind of cheating. Because like the smartwatch, well, that's a, that's an innovation that's a different you know item so to speak okay. almost done and then i guess i'll do the rest of the um the stream as being 
the uh, Space Valk 3 uniform. Or the armor emblazoned or reminiscent of Space Valk 3. I don't know. However you want to call it. Uh, make a lock channel on the Discord where you can just add to the, lo uh, to the lot. Row. Gamma radar? No, we've already used gamma. It has to be a, um, a Greek letter we've not yet used. Okay. That's not bad. Um, the only problem is if I extrapolate these columns up, It's really kind of like whatever. Oh, and also, I think I just want this to be like that. I don't think I'm going to have it connect up fully, but hey. That works. Oh, and then I need to choose material typing. And then this layer can be, um, or well, actually, no, it would, be, it would have to be one layer up. Row RTX monitor. Ooh, that's good, but not quite it. Uh, row LED screen. Because an LED screen is actually, you know, a genuine difference in technology. And uh, that makes more sense to me. Because you had the old CRT monitors from way back when. And then you had... You know, the transition to the flat plasma screens and then the LED screens, like what we have today. RTX monitor, I don't know that that's going to be quite the same. That sounds more like some extravagant gaming rig addition and less of an actual, you know, evolution of technology. That's the, that's the feeling I get, because like... The Abacus was a calculatory machine. A calculator is a calculatory machine. Um, matri matryoshka is a theoretical calculatory machine. Um, yeah, stuff like that. More stuff like that. The computer, obviously, big one. Big, big, big leap in technological calculatory things. The smartphone was, because that was a... Uh, a level of power that had not yet been realized. Not just the cell phone, but the smartphone, because that was what, you know, cemented this, this leap forward of technology that previously didn't exist. Okay. Kind of put some peaks on this. Give it some... Uh, Give it some character there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. So, yeah, what's another calculatory item? Radar? Uh, radar isn't bad. Um, I don't know that's for calculatory things, though. Headset? Telegram? Ooh, telegram. Yeah, that was, that was in a, that was a way. Although, actually, better yet, Omicron Arithmetic. Because Arithmetic was a calculatory system derived, you know, Arithmetic came before all of this. So, yeah, it would have to be Omicron Arithmetic. Because um, before the Abacus and before, you know, all this other shit, you would have had the basic system, arithmetic. That would have had to have come first. 
So yeah, that makes sense, because that's a calculatory tool. Um, in a way, you know, I guess you could consider arithmetic to be a sort of technology of its own. It's just the great-great-grandfather of all of this. If uh, the computer is the, the granddaddy of modern tech. Or no, the abacus, I guess, would be the granddaddy of modern tech. I don't know. There's a lot of, like, sentimental... Or, uh, not sentiment. Um, semantical. There it is. There's a lot of semantical sort of, like, punting around you could do. Is mathematics a technology or not? Is it an invention? Or is it just the innate state of the world? The universe was always this way anyway. We just sort of figured it out. That kind of thing. Alpha is dying inside, realizing he needs to buy an account for every Greek letter. Yikes, that's a lot of money, but... I feel like if you wanted a monopoly on this naming system, you'd have to go for it. That's just an... That's a... A, a, a sacrifice Alpha is willing to make. <laughs> Not really. So, Omicron Telegram. Hmm, Maybe. Psy Ruler. Ooh, the ruler was a good one, too. Although, actually, the slide rule would be slightly better. Because the slide rule was a uh, technological advancement. I've not received any angry DMs from Alpha, so he must approve. But anyway, yeah. So let's uh, let's wax poetically. What is what is mathematics? Is it a technology or is it a system that always existed? Was it always there? Was it you know what came first, the the uh, the egg or the chicken? I'm interested to see everybody's opinions on that. Math is an interpretation of the things around us. Well, that's not bad. Not a bad way to look at it. Certainly not wrong. Basically how we interpret the properties of the universe. That's that's a good point. So then is math a technology? By that idea, it would always have been there, but mathematics as we have conceived of would naturally be a technology, right? See, in my opinion, the idea of is it A or B is inherently flawed. I think it's both. There's no reason that math can't be both a technology and a system that was just made whole cloth. I'd be willing to bet that it was indeed always there, sure, but that in terms of technology, well, well there's no reason it can't be both. And in all honesty, I think it's silly to try to divide it evenly between two. That one annoying class that messed my GDP up. Oh, math. Technology is the color. Yeah, I suppose, in a way. In a way, it is a lot like, you know, colors, the color system, the color wheel. Yeah, that is in a, a lot of ways a technology. It is conceived of or envisioned in order to help bring about some sort of property or principle. Okay, I didn't lose any items on the ground. It's nomenclature at most when it comes to technology. True, true. But I would argue that nomenclature is the simplest technology. Nomenclature is the backbone of all technology. Because without it, we wouldn't know how to make anything. We wouldn't know how to designate anything, and we wouldn't know how to order or organize anything. And therefore, technology as a whole would basically be non-existent. So without nomenclature, there ain't no point to anything, because that's the, the core. You know, it's like elementary particles. Without those, you don't got complex matter. Ah. 
delicious. Now then, it's so weird looking down there and seeing the beginnings of something. When I'm so used to looking down there and that was just open, open to the air like over here. You just look down and see the, the beauty of nature that I will one day ruin. And now, nothing. Welcome back to another episode of Deep Philosophy with Jack. Another episode? I would argue that the, uh, the first episode never ended. Okay. Now, um, I did say we could go ahead and do the uniform thing. And I guess we can. Um, I really want to pick out a material typing for this wall before I just jump to something totally different. Uh, but I don't know. I also need to make this meet up, this floor here. It can't just be open to the air like this. I've got to close this off at some point. Complete non sequitur, but you are left-handed IRL or is it cosmetic? It is cosmetic. When the handedness uh, feature was implemented, uh, something about how the uh, hack client I was using at the time interpreted uh, the left and the right hand it would screw up where I had all my mods whoops, placed. I would have like a readout down here and uh, the left hand offhand or the original offhand rather like this got in the way and I was like, oh, that looks awful. Here, let me change it. And so I changed it to the left hand and then I just got so used to it. I just kept using it and I've never switched. And now if I try to use my right hand, it looks weird. It feels weird. So yeah, I'm a left-handed person. I play a left-handed person in Minecraft. Okay. Um, I've got all these deep slate slab or these polished diorite slabs. I just want to fill out one section for now. Just something to like give me something to build off of. Hmm. Let's try this calcite. Calcite diorite. Okay. Um... So I would build it up like this. Oh, poop. And then every so often, I would put some slabs hither and yon. just to give it some character. Actually, maybe every three. Hmm. There we go. Yeah, that's not bad. I could maybe extrapolate that out. And upward. And then I could embed. I actually do like the calcite. I really do kind of like how that calcite is shaped out. I'm going to be a cowboy. On a, on a uh, netherite horse I ride.
sent a couple of Discord DMs. Okay, let me uh, let me look at them. Hatchies. Alpha computer, beta calculator, gamma radar. No, we already have a gamma. It's a uh, gamma abacus. Uh, Delta telegram. <laughs> That's pretty cute. Epsilon punch card machine. I, I really like that. Zeta Texas Instruments 2004. Sigma laptop. I really like that one. Iota headphones. <laughs> That's those are all really cute. I like that. I'll, I'll run those by Alpha someday and see how he see how he reacts. Um, we have Gamma Abacus. We ha well, actually, sorry, we've already got a Zeta as well. So you can't do Zeta Texas Instruments. It would have to be um, something else. And we've also Texas Instruments 2004. That's a, a calculator, right? Yeah, that's a calculator. We've already got a calculator. So that one's not going to work. We've got Zeta Matryoshka. Beta calculator. Yeah, so like, don't use the same thing twice, basically. That's the idea I'm getting. Jack, please use right hand. No, Fumar, I cannot. I'm sorry. I'm not right-handed in Minecraft. I'm only left-handed in Minecraft. And if you are somehow upset or it bothers you or whatever, like you're just going to have to get over it. Because I'm not changing. It's too weird for some reason. For me, switching to my right would be weird. I wouldn't be able to get used to it. I know I wouldn't. So yeah, sorry guys, I'm just I'm just setting my ways. Okay, so let's make this an up slab. Or a, a bottom slab rather. Bottom slab, bottom slab. Here, here. <clears throat> to uh sort of counteract. So these are bottom slabs, and then these three down here are top slabs. Oh, right here as well. So we've got a sort of symmetric pattern going. And actually, I might go ahead and connect these up. Just for like right here. Something for Mew? Oh, Mew. Yeah, Mew. Hmm. Uh, Mew... Sextant. Alpha will like that because of the word sex. It cracked me up that Ail Mango had to explain to people that he doesn't make his technical videos to be successful, but apparently people were complaining that his videos were boring. And I completely agree with them. They are boring. But I also, like, don't... I get it. Like, I understand why he does what he does. And so I'm completely in agreement with Il Mango. Like, if it's just boring, I'm just going to be like, okay, I'll come back to this later. Okay, I'll watch this a different day. Like, that's fine. <laughs> you know, you don't got to be an asshole about it. And there are just so many people who are assholes about it. And well, we do indeed live in an internet age. Oh, well. Could be worse. Oh, wait. Mm. I ruined the patterning. I need to move this down one. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfection. And then I'll wrap these slabs around this way and up that way. Now I just need a good material for the, uh, the pillar itself. Maybe Blackstone or a Deep Slate variant? A Deep Slate varmint? Perfect. Okay. 
that actually was a far more easier thing to pull off than I expected. Uh, let's go with cobble. Why not? And if I don't like it, I will simply change it. Haha, <laughs> funny sex word. Yes, sextant. That's why I'm like, he'll, he'll get a kick out of that one. Mew sextant. <laughs> Something like that. Do I open e4 or d4 chess as white? I don't know what the fuck you're asking me. I'm sorry. When I play chess, I just play by instinct. And then I try to not lose to alpha. Oh shit. And that's it. I don't I don't open e4 or any of that. I don't know what what even you're referring to. Well, I do know you're referring to the board. But I don't know where the, where on the board that is off the top of my head. So, no, I don't think about that at all. Okay, so this is floating out like this. Right there. This needs like a stair under it to connect it up. Or no, 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 a cobblestone slab. King pawn or queen pawn first? I don't do that. I think about... Um, I just, I just go on instinct, man. I don't always think about it that hard. Like, I don't ever consider the first two to three chess moves of any value. I'm always thinking in reaction to what alpha does because I only ever chess alpha. So like, I don't really care. And I'm not in, oh, I'm not into chess for like the competitive aspect. I don't, I don't care that much. Two, damn it, I only recovered two. Uh, I think I got some cyan terracotta somewhere. The slime calculator and farm were dope as fuck. Oh yeah, yeah, the slime calculator and farm was great. I like seeing Il Mango, what he comes up with. Because he's not always going to think of the same thing twice. He and Etho are a lot, of, a lot alike in that regard. They will think outside the box every now and then. And it's refreshing. Okay, I was about to say, oh no, do I not have any? <sighs> Shit. Wrong block. Wrong block. So yeah, it's a, uh... It's not a big concern of mine to worry about chess. The soft spiders. Um, if I was more into chess, I would have a better idea as to what's better overall. But as it stands, I only ever play alpha for fun, so I don't ever care. I, I, I want to get good enough to beat him reliably, and that's it. And when I'm done with chess, we're done with chess, and that's it. Um, if there is a strategic value to the king or queen pawn first... Sure, whatever. But all in all, I ain't worried about it. Oh, hmm. I should have uh, gotten me six more polished diorite slabs just to connect it up. Oh, and then I also want, now that I'm thinking about it, I also want to, there we go. Oh wait, shit, I need three more. Three. He is desperately trying to hide the fact that he is Magnus Carlsen. What? <laughs> sure, I'm Magnus von Carlsen, sure. One of the best chess players ever in existence, sure. 
How are things on the fan server? I have not been on there since uh, Saturday, so I don't know. Um, in all honesty, I really kind of wish I hadn't opened the fan server. But, like, people enjoyed it well enough. So I guess I can't, like, fault them or anything. Just that it just wasn't as interesting as I had hoped it would be for myself. And then Constantium updating, like, really, like, put the nail in the coffin. So, hey, what can you do? It's nobody's fault, really. Okay. Now, I want to sort of put... Oh no, bricks don't go any de uh, go any uh, farther than brick, do they? Oh wait, no, yeah, that's right. You turn brick and then you turn them into tile. That was it. Okay. And then I want to flank the tiles with some sort of a light. thing two PTT players and Bobby Fisher have in common is their analysis. Wow. Can't say that out in the open. You enjoyed your time there. It was fun to take a break from your single player world. You might honestly just quit that one and continue your in-dev world through the modern versions. Really? All right. Well, we miss you. Uh, we had hoped you would do more on your uh, tower, but you know, fair enough to each their own. terrible. This does need a little more extra something. It's just sort of calcite. That's fine, but it needs to be... Like, this is a large, broad, flat, empty-looking, you know, spot. I feel like that could be further remedied. So if you miss another Chrono Trigger stream, you're going to jump out a window. Well, in two and a half days. Or no, three days, I guess. Yeah. In three days, you'll be able to see another and the final Chrono Trigger stream. So hopefully that window won't be calling your name, Patches. But if it does, I understand. Just don't forget. The time of the stream is always the same. So, you know, try to not miss or whatever if you want to. If that's, if that's your, your axe to grind, don't miss. No, no, what's no? The final Chrono Trigger stream? Like, you knew it would have to come eventually, man. Might come back for a little bit, but honestly can't think of anything else to add to your base other than filler. We'll do more uh, backroom stuff, man. We love that. Finish your backrooms. Oh, and also, everybody will get creative mode on the final day. So there's that to look forward to, I guess. It's gonna be a wild day. But we will first give out a backup of it. And that will be the version that everybody play, or that will be the version that will be given out. And then creative will be allowed to run rampant on the remainder. But that version will be nuked into oblivion once it's all finished.
Okay. Almost finished with this wall segment. Not too much longer now. Diorite slabs. Okay. There we go. That about finishes up this one little segment. Now I just need to figure out what to put in the middle. Also, I love how there's a chunk error over there. I don't know how that generated there, but it did. Uh, I don't try to show up when I walk out of final lecture and turn the stream on when you walk by the door every time you sit here. Bye. I'm sorry, hat cheese. Maybe one day that'll stop being the case. And then you cry yourself to sleep. Oof. Big oof, mate. I'm sorry. Well, I can't help you on that one. You'll either get it or you won't. Okay, so this giant empty spot. What, what's something I can put on there? Maybe a glass inset to sort of make that a window. Oh, I know. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, let's mark out the bottom. Perfect. Okay. Maybe one more block of height. How's that look? And then maybe I can put something else around that. I don't know. And then maybe I can vary it up and down this little hole instead of making every single slat here the same. I can vary it with holes in different positions and then maybe cover some of them up with, I don't know, something to make it look interesting. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Alrighty, I'm going to jump to my creative um, world with uh, the uh, new snapshot stuff in there. Fuck. Uh, fuck it, who needs college when Chrono Trigger is a thing? Well, you can always just skip on, um, what is it, Friday? Like, that's just the last lecture of the, the week. You can always just ignore it. Hey, Angel An Angelic Angel Lisa, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Okay. There we go. Come on. 
Wow, this version is so laggy. There we go. Experiments for armor. They added armor trim. Yes, I know, Metal Bunny. We're about to experiment with those right now. So I went ahead and laid them all out in advance anyway. Not that I intended to stream it, but that um, I intended to uh, sort of piece it together and figure out which ones I want. Also, set. Um, and then let's do game. Do daylight save. False. There we go. Okay. So now we've got perpetual daylight, and we can actually see what this looks like. There's no way we're not using netherite. I mean, come on. Um, the idea behind this is that you would have the best possible armor, and that you would put the appropriate trim on all of it in order to make it look good. And obviously you can mix and match colors and patterns and so on. All that. So what I had been doing, oops. Um, let me go ahead and get some vanilla netherite. This is just my usual affair, so that I can shift click this armor around more efficiently. So that's what that one looks like. I've already kind of settled on the helmet I like, the ribbed helmet with the red redstone. It's so vibrant, I love it. It stands out very well against the, the purpley hue of the Enchanted Netherite. It doesn't get in the way. It's not like super obnoxious and it's uh, pretty consistent looking. I like that. So I've already decided on the um, rib armor trim redstone upgrade for this. One knockback resist one armor toughness. Yeah, that's all the stuff. And so I'm not changing that. I'm, I'm pretty well settled on this. So like We've got a lot of choices here. Got this one, this one. I'm partial to this one, which was um, Dex, Snout, Tide, Coast, Spire, Ward. I think this is Ward. No, it's Dune. My bad. So yeah, I'm partial to Dune myself. I like how it looks. Um... You can tell that they didn't have a lot of real estate to really, like, play with patterns. And they probably made it to where most of the patterns are symmetrical. Although Vex isn't too bad. I know this is the Vex because it makes it look like an evoker. Something like that. Jack, put on netherite, put netherite on diamond, then upgrade that to netherite for netherite on netherite. Really? Okay. Diamant. Netherite, and then pattern. How do you make a smithing te template? How do you craft that? What is the recipe for this, the smithing template? Feels kind of arbitrary. Eh? Oh, you gotta put that in first. Okay. That. Oh, whoops. I almost did a stupid. Uh, let's find a good one. Sentry. Why not? Let's go with Sentry. This is just arbitrary, but this should work. Ooh. Okay. Oh, if only you could, like, manipulate and explore with this, and, like, like with your, um, your own player model, how you can move around. Oh, if only it would do that for this. Ah, so that's netherite on netherite. I assume this is the only material on itself. What's this looking like? Ah, okay. So you can kind of tell. So this is the base. Um, the basic netherite without anything on it. It's, oh shit, it's too close. It's definitely different. You can tell sort of where the uh, the colory bits are supposed to go. 
Let's uh, let's get something vibrant like um, redstone to help illustrate where it's actually supposed to go. Get another sentry. Hmm? Oh, that. I'm not used to the uh, the pattern. Okay, so it's only around the shoulder blades. Interesting. So yeah, you can definitely tell a difference between vanilla netherite, netherite on netherite, and then a different color. Which I really like this. This just looks awesome. Obsidian needs to be a material, and so do the echo shards. Especially the echo shards. These are worthless. They just don't have a value of any kind. Like, that's such a shame. Wouldn't it be nice if I could put something that looked like this? Yeah, that's just not a... It's just not a material. No, you can't upgrade your item, even though I already did. Soy Wojak crying face. Okay, well, that's cool, I guess. But overall, not like... Like, netherite on netherite really doesn't wow me. I'm more a fan of uh, mixing and matching patterns and colors to make something unique. That really is what I want. Netherite upgrade can only be found in the bastion chests. Interesting. So you've got to find and raid a bastion. Ugh. That really kind of defeats the point. I'm so glad we made all our netherite in advance. Um, hold on one moment. I'm going to go and get something to drink because my mouth is killing me. Uno momentum, poor favor. Oh my, okay, I'm back. The diamond on diamond looks really cool. Uh, show me uh, in Discord, I guess. <clears throat> anyway. Now then. Uh, something cool that comes out of this is you make entirely different textures for armor based on what trim you put on them. So like, in a resource pack, is that what you're getting at? 
Well, that's cool, I guess. Trying to keep all of this organized spire. Hide. Then Rib. I really like how Rib looks. Like, just in general, Rib has... I guess I got rid of my Rib. But yes, Rib just has like this amazing look to it. Amethyst. That might be what we end up going with predominantly. I don't know. No, that's snout. Rib. I actually kind of want to see what a full set of Rib looks like in Amethyst, that just sort of feels right to me. Ooh. You know, that ain't bad. Maybe get some red. Yeah, I think the red stands out better. Quartz. Uh, let's try quartz as well. I will definitely, let me put all this other junk up first before I get sidetracked. Snout. Snoot. And Vex. There's a lot of potential here for a lot of different chant, uh, you know, really good mix and match type stuff. It's Wild Ward. Century. It's the find of the century. I still haven't memorized where you find all the patterns yet. So, like... Oh, well. Okay, so rib ain't bad. I'll keep rib in mind. Uh, where is it? Quartz. Let's try quartz. And then I know I already... Uh, a dune ain't bad. Rib. We'll see. What does that look like on a chess piece? That's not terrible either. Uh, so we went with that one. Let me collect all these. I don't want these. I'm a fan of mixing and matching materials, if nothing else. But damn, this rib stuff looks really good. I think glowstone sea lantern trim would be something cool, especially if it gave off light. That wouldn't be a bad idea for, like, sea lanterns. I've seen people offer prismarine or something. Glowstone dust or prismarine or glowstone blocks. Those would be pretty cool, too. But they'd have to light up. But then they could only be client side light. I don't know. You pinged me in Discord. Thank you, Steve. Oh, welcome back, Mike. Let's see here. Diamond on a diamond. It doesn't look terrible. It looks weird. You got these dark streaks that are obviously the same material, but not the appropriate color. It does look good. It looks a lot like Tiger Stripes in a way. Rib is kind of like Tiger Stripes. I think that's why I like it. I like Tiger Stripes. Um, where did I go? Hide. Mm, we'll see. Um, I think for the chest, though, I'm going to go with Ward. Uh, Ward Amethyst. Or is that Doom? Wait, maybe this is Doom. Yeah, it's Doom, my bad. 
Amethyst Dune. Juggling armor is not fun. Okay, then let's try it. Sentry. Okay. Ooh. That's not terrible. I kind of like Sentry. Let me, um, you know, buy these real fast. I've, I've kind of finalized the chest plate. And now I kind of want to find, and I've tried, kind of sort of finalized the helmet too. Let's see what pant style. Uh, Dark Takanuva gave me a really cool screenshot earlier this morning. I wasn't sure what that was about. Does it all just come out? Hmm. I might use his screenshot as, like, reference. Okay. We go to the spares. Ooh, these look really good. That is a good design. I like that. Fire. That isn't terrible either. We stylin'. Hello from the second work break. Welcome back, Universe. I'm sorry your work break is uh, so frequent, or so infrequent, or whatever, small, or whatever. Uh, strange how the item makes the diamond overlay green. Yeah, it's a, a darker coloration. It's, it's a little, I don't know. It has to have something to do with how their system works for overlaying these textures. It's, uh, it's interesting, to say the least. Rib pattern, Jack the Ribba. It's all coming together now. Holy shit, you've memed this into existence, haven't you, Metal Bunny? How could you? You fiend. I might just have to call myself that, ironically. Just to, um, I don't know, keep up the meme magic. I mean, having meme magic on my side is pretty, pretty good, I guess. Okay. Let me make a bunch of uh, mannequins here. Okay, so how many do I have in total? One, three, six, nine, twelve. Oh, that's one too many. Three, six, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, cool. That's just enough. God, I wish fast break was a thing. There we go. Damn. So I've basically settled on the chest piece and the hel helmet. Now I'm thinking of the leggings and what's like the best. Ooh, this one ain't bad either. I like how it sort of comes down around the side. It sort of looks a lot like jeans or like some sort of... um. I don't know. Which one is this? This is rib, again. Ribbed for uh, no one's pleasure. Yeah, that one's a little, little bit meh. I'm not gonna lie, rib isn't. Rib is not uh, killing it in the pant department. Uh, what one is this? This is snout. What's it look like by itself? Because you can kind of see. Oh, it's got a giant belt on it. I, I kind of like that. Let me, let me try out these new pants. New Tommy Hilfiger pants. Oh. 
How does it, does it make my ass look too big, you think? No, no, it's, it's just right. But I really like the giant oversized belt. Oh, I'm stupid. That's the snout. That just, that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Wow. So then by that metric, that's tied, rib, snout. Uh, so by this metric, there should be a snout on just about every piece of armor with the snout on it, right? Is uh, he making the official Jack the Ripper armor? I'm making the official Space Valk um, 3 inspired armor set. It'll be a uniform at every base that I go to. It'll be indicative of me. I really like this armor piece too, actually. I wanted to make it um, amethyst. Because, like, I wanted all the Space Valk colors. We got the dark undertone. We got the light quartz accents. We got the red and the purple. That's pretty much all the colors Space Valk 3 had. Let's, uh, let's swap these out. Ooh. That ain't bad either. This reminds me of some sort of, like, armor from a JRPG. But I'm having a tough time pointing to which one. I, I want to say this sort of reminds me of Kingdom Hearts a little bit. Just an itsy bitsy bit. It reminds me of something Sora wore. I don't know. Oh, and also, these pants have a sort of like... What is this? Chainmail? Briefs? Kind of funky. Kind of like it. I kind of like these pants as well. I really like these pants. And I really like these pants. So that's like what? Uh, let me put a uh, thermal block. Just, just to uh, indicate my positives. I, stuff I like. Oh, I really like this one. Spire, I think that one is. This, this one ain't bad. But it outlines the ass, and I don't like that. I don't want quartz outlinings on my ass cheeks, you know? It just doesn't... It's not kosher. I can't I can't stand for that. Uh, okay, so uh, we won't worry about the chest piece. But yeah, the snout uh, pants are all right. They're not terrible. Um, now, I kind of want to see how each piece that I approve looks like without the chest piece blocking it, because the chest piece blocks part of it. Okay, that's nice and clean. I like it. That's very uniform. It's got a very uh, defined pant waist unit. What's this one look like? Ah, who cares? That ain't very good. Nope. That ain't got anything on the other side. This one's kind of okay, I guess, but it's still not great. Yeah, these three are winning in my books. Oh, whoops. Um, rib is kind of falling apart. Snout has a giant belt on it. And I like that, but that's not enough to save it. Oh, let me, uh, let me, oh uh, yeah, no. This, uh, this version, whatever this one is, this is so plain. What is this one? Vex. Oh, it's supposed to look like a robe, that's why. Let's get rid of that. Um, hmm. Not really seeing anything, like, super unique about it. It just sort of looks like it's one continual piece of, uh, clothing. You know, it's a robe, effectively. What does Vex look like overall? Doom. Wild Ward I Vex. We'll settle on the boots here in a minute. Although I do actually want to try the, the Vex suit. You know, maybe we should get a bonus for having a full set of the same pattern. 
instead of mixing and matching patterns, which obviously you can do that, maybe there should be a set bonus. So if you get enough versions of Vex and you slap it all on all the pieces of your armor and you're willing, wearing a full set of this, maybe you should get some sort of a bonus to like resistance from a certain damage type. Or like we talked about earlier, a movement bonus. Like you can move a little faster, jump a tiny bit higher, that kind of thing. Maybe there should be something like that. I don't know. Oh, we already got Vex, okay. It feels like there's a lot of potential to this that is otherwise probably going to be just wasted. Because this is Mojang we're talking about. Again, not exactly the highest of standards. Or the highest of hopes, I mean, not standards. Okay, so... Yeah, I'm just going to get rid of the rest of these because they're just not as good. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate the ones that aren't as good so that they aren't taking up real estate where they don't need to be. What is this? Coast. And I'm sure some of these are very beautiful when you have the entire set all the same. I'm just not that interested in them. Okay, so Spire must be one of the ones I've picked. Tide also must be one of the ones I picked. Rib. Snoot. Oh! I deleted that, didn't I? I do want to maintain my full sets. There we go. Just because I'm a completionist that way. I. I, I. Ward. Oh, Ward must be one of the ones I've picked. Wild, Dune, Sentry. Oh, and then Vex we already have. Okay. Hmm. So of these three, oh, and I guess I can put the ones in my inventory back up. So Spire. I think this is Spire, and I really, really like how that one looks. I might actually, I might go back and visit all of the Spire sets and see if that's something good. Board. Gold trim should make mob drops more loot. Ooh, that would be a wonderful idea, yes. What are the chainmail pants? Ooh, I don't want to wear chainmail. So I have not tried any chainmail anything. But you can put chainmail, or not chainmail, rather, you can put stuff on chainmail. So like your options are pretty wild, or pretty uh, wide and varied, I mean. Okay. So we can put this, um, I don't know, when you stack it up to this, this looks cooler, in my opinion, so I'm gonna keep that. Yeah, I'm not, uh, not convinced. Um, so these pants. Ooh. Or these pants. I've got it down to two choices.
Yeah, I'm just trying to get it, like, as even as possible. Okay, so it's a tie between the Spire and the Ward. Ooh, that's good. Tie between Spire and Ward. That's a tough one. Uh, does Ward do anything, like, visually? Oh, let me go ahead and turn off my cable. There we go. Hmm. I don't know. Ooh, yeah, I like that better. I really like Spire the best for pants. Pant-wise, yeah, Spire, Spire wins. I'll be real with you. The moment I saw Spire, my heart was... Stolen. Can you put something on Elytra? I don't think you can, can you? It's not like... Whoops. Bam, bam. No, it doesn't work. I didn't think so. Yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't work with an Elytra, but imagine you can put trim on an Elytra. That'd be cool. It was nice to pop in and watch for a little while. Okay, take care, Metal Bunny. Thanks for coming out, man. Tide. Oh, it's not Spire. It's Tide. My bad. Tide is the one that looks good. Okay. So we got Tide Pants. Ward chest plate, rib helmet. That ain't terrible. Now we've got a plethora of boots. Little itty bitty booties. That's not terrible, that's not terrible. Okay. That's pretty decent. I like that one. Uh, that was a little plain. And then for these last two, oh, this is obviously Vex. This one's not terrible either. Hmm. Let me let me uh, get some room to examine them from all angles. Well, I'll say this. This makes a clothing shop actually really fucking nice. You can actually make a really cool, really dope clothing shop and charge reasonable prices that aren't just like, oh yeah, you know, armor or whatever. Like, you can customize armor and, and offer deals and trends and you know, all this and different fashion styles and, oh, uh, well, this is in this season, etc., etc., could do all sorts of crap like that. That would be awesome. I really like how this looks. This opens up a lot of possibility, if nothing else. The only problem is getting a hold of some of these. You might not want to sell them in, like, a shop area or whatever. Getting a hold of them would be a nightmare. Vex armor gives phase bypass. Oh my god, that would be hilarious. Which one is the, yeah, this one. It's meant to look like a robe, so it doesn't have anything on the bottom other than this front seam. And that's just kind of lazy, in my opinion. Uh, go Snout Gold Trim makes piglins friendly. Ooh. Maybe so. Okay. Now comes the part where I mark out my face. Rib is very dull looking. Wait a minute. Quartz, yeah. Quartz. Yeah, rib is very dull compared to the lighter vibrant here. Unless this is not quartz. No, it is quartz. Okay. Man, this is tough. 
I really like this one, how um, sort of gabled it looks. This one's not terrible either. Let me uh, let me take a, a walk in walk in the park with these. Oh, remove the cape. Not terrible. Hmm. Netherite could give multiple buffs of less worth, just like how protection will give you less protection from all damage. Maybe so. It's criminal that it doesn't work on Elytra. Yes, we need to say something about that right now. Speak up and tell them. Put it on Elytra. Put this on Elytra. It's one thing that it doesn't work on leather. I'm alright with that. But, yeah, you should be able to put Trem on an Elytra. Most definitely. It will show whatever the skin of the cape is underneath, plus the base elytra. I will happily take that. And also, this one's this one's pretty good. I'll, I'll consider that one. This one's just kind of whatever. This one's unique in that it's all the way around, and it's a good enough balance. The only problem is the boot doesn't have a lot of real estate to put, like, designs on. It's not terrible either okay, but it's only on the front. This one's okay, too. This one's also really good. Yeah, I like that. It has it on all sides. And that's that. Okay. So now I've got, like, five boot types to choose from. That's different. Uh, we don't need these anymore. They are not decided. Or they're already decidedly eliminated. Hmm. Which one fails? I really like this one a lot. I really like this one, and I really like this one. This one's just okay. Man, this is tough. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to do... First of all, let me put all the excess ones on the coast. Spire. Vex. I. Ward. Wild. Dune. And then Sentry. And the only thing I'm missing is the ribbed helmet. Just to keep my sets all set. Okay. Now then. Oh, whoops. Now, how does this look if I just walk around normally? So it doesn't appear to have any sort of inlay on the inner part of the boot. It's so like as I walk around, there's nothing on the inside of my leg. Which for the pants makes sense, but for the boots, I feel like the boots should have a, a design all the way around. Boots, boots with the fur need to have fur all the way around. So I have to go. Goodbye, I... And then we've got Sentry. Now, Sentry does have a design all the way around. 
you can kind of see there's a bit on everything. And I like having it all the way around three-dimensionally. I don't want a, a mark on just the front or just the back. I, I kind of want designing everywhere. So I really like that one. Now, so I'll keep that one there in mind. Put that back. Okay, so we got coast. So we got coast leggings, or sorry, tied leggings, coast boots. And once again, these have everything all the way around. So there's no spot that doesn't have a detail. I really like that. I want there to be detailing on every piece as much as is possible. That's also really good. So these two are like winning out. And then, once again, we got a design on all four sides. We're using all the real estate available. I like that. What is this one? Uh, Spire. Hmm. Which again, has something on all sides. So we've got every possible list. Every possible angle covered. So I guess it, it's a matter of what boot design best carries the leggings, because the leggings go down. The leggings lead into the boots. What becomes, you know, the leggings bottom out somehow. What style best matches the leggings? The leggings are nice and crazy, but in a good way. Um, these all do well, in all, in all honesty, they all work. But I think I'm going to go with this one. Cool. So, this will be the official Space Valk 3 uniform. Or, well, armor in the style of. Nice. Okay, well, all of that just to uh, decide one style. Now. In addition to that, got some color choices we can flex um, I'll put that there okay so this will be the special set now what I could do is for Ward. Where'd it go? Vex. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm stupid. I'm, I'm doing it wrong. Okay. I don't know why I decided to grab the other ones. I wasn't thinking. Okay, so rib, helmet. There we go. Okay, so rib, ports, helmet. Uh, that's that. Then amethyst home. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get alternative colors to red. So we got red, purple, and white.
Let's just get rid of that. It's not. Not that. I really like that. That bright red sort of thing. Ooh, that is so awesome looking. I might go with this instead of the uh, amethyst chest plate. So the patterns I'm pretty well happy with. The coloration now I want to shuffle around and see if I can't tie. There we are. Okay, uh, so we, we went with Tide Quartz Pants. So, Redstone and Amethyst. That's interesting. Honestly, I'm kind of like of the opinion that maybe I should just make it the same material. So then that just leaves Amethyst Boots. Oh, well, what boot type did I get? It's Spire. Okay. Uh, red and amethyst. Whoops. Bam. And then... So we can mix and match crazy ways. And so what I can do is... So uh, those boots for Spire? Yeah, Spire. Or no, 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 no. I'm, I'm doing it wrong again. We've got... White Spire boots. Oh, Dune and Rib. Okay, so Dune and Rib. Where did, where did I put it? Where did I put it? Quartz. There. Helmet, helmet was ribbed. I'm, I'm fucking it up again. Okay. That, and it was Dune. for the chest piece. There we go. Boom chest piece. Oh, and then while I'm at it, I should probably get the red and purple variants too. Spire again, the boots. Okay. Boots, spire. Golly, this is so complicated now. Tide leggings. Okay. All right. 
And so this is with it all color unified. So the pattern styles Okay, so the patterning is fine. I can mix and match the colors as I wish. That's somewhat easy to do. So this is if it's all uniform coloration. You know, the amethyst looks really good, but the red, ooh man. This red looks so good. I just don't think though that, um, like emerald isn't all that great, diamond is okay, gold is good. Gold looks really nice. What would a gold helmet look like? Oh, uh, let me get my clown suit. Oh wow, gold on the helmet looks weird. It doesn't normally look that strange on other pieces. Is it maybe the enchantment hue? Jack Iron Trim is green almost? Why? Need netherite elytra? You want to believe like a Valkyrie? Valkyrie? Okay. Jack the Gripper. Or Griper? Would be that, well, that would be Gripper, right? All right, take care, Sam. Emerald gives luck, redstone gives strength, lapis gives magic increase, quartz drop luck, amethyst increased blast protection, copper is a speed buff when dry, iron is strength, gold decreases mob aggro, uh, netherite is strength and protection. Interesting. Very uh, odd ideas. I don't know that it'll all pan out that way. Pretty sure they're not gonna like. Give this any decent amount of like. There's no buff here. There's no buff that's coming. I don't think they're gonna give us any sort of like advantage to this. I, I really don't think they're they're thinking that far ahead. They probably want it to remain aesthetic. Dune. Where, where are you at, Dune? There you at. This is the same patterning, but it's all gold. And in all honesty, I kind of like the gold. It just isn't Space Valk uh, colors. all gold. Looks really good. NGL. I really do like gold for this as well. Almost looks like a... Um... Oh, you know what this also reminds me of? It reminds me of Tron. The suit design. Maybe that's why I... I, I loved Tron as a kid. Maybe that's why I'm, desi I'm drawn to this design. Like, it just looks good. And then we got lots of other color variations. I don't know. I'm having trouble, like, picking. I might just go with this. But then again, gold is such a good look. Gold with maybe an amethyst helmet. OK. 
Okay. You know, yellow and purple really do kind of go together. They're like Mardi Gras colors. Gold and purple especially well. It's very Mardi Gras-esque. Ooh, oh, speaking of, if I went tied, okay, so tied pants, coast, tied. If I do it this way, now it's really Mardi Gras looking. You got that giant vibrant green color on the pants. Gold and purple everywhere. Yeah, wow. You could make some Mardi Gras armor. I actually kind of like that. It's not Space Falc. Or Space Falc 3, I should say. But it's unique enough. So I don't know. But uh, at any rate, everybody, I will catch you all later. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to cook on this a little bit longer before I'm really ready to, like, dedicate it to one design. Because they're probably going to change this stuff, let's be real. They always do. So, yeah. Other than that, guys, I will catch you all later. Thank you all so much for coming out and giving me a moment of your time. I'd appreciate it if you all left a like and subscribed and followed me on all my socials and join our Discord link down below. And apart from that, I will catch you all later. Goodbye.